This is In-Depth. On this Martin Luther King Jr. Day, it's ironic that our observances went virtual due to COVID. We are inside looking out. Well, the impact Dr. King had on this country is as relevant today as it was a long time ago. I wanted to get perspectives from two generations. I'm joined tonight by Reverend Gerald Arnold, president of the local NAACP, and Alex Burton. He is Evansville's Fourth Ward City Councilman. Gentlemen, thank you for your company tonight. Had it not been an act of violence that ended his life, Martin Luther King Jr. would possibly have been with us today. With that being said, what would he think of what's happened by events that have divided our nation even more? Alex, I'm going to start with you on that. I'm sorry, Brad, could you repeat the question? What would Martin Luther King Jr. feel right now about what has happened to this country, especially during the last two years? Um, uh, that, that's a good question, Brad. You know, uh, I answer that and I look at that question from the lens of, you know, so many, seeing so much progress, you know, seeing uh, where we are as a society, how much we've grown, but at the same time still seeing remnants of the past. Uh, you know, last week we saw, we were able to see uh, what happened at the Capitol. Uh, no time in history, even through the Civil War, has a Confederate flag ever made it that far. Uh, but at the same time, tomorrow, or excuse me, Wednesday, we'll inaugurate uh, the first Af the first black uh, vice president of the United States. Um, and so I, I think he'd be uh, a happy in some regard, but there's still so much work to accomplish. With that said, uh, Reverend Arnold, history, it is so important, especially with future generations uh, looking back on what happened on January 6th. And with that, uh, Reverend Arnold, you lived uh, through this uh, in many ways when you were a young man. Are things worse now than they were back then? Um, I, 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 I kind of have to say in one respect, yes. Uh, never in my life, I never, never thought I would see this tragedy just took place in our capital uh, that uh, people would amass themselves to that degree that they would overthrow the democracy that we have fought for for so many years. I think Dr. King would definitely have a tear uh, falling from his eyes. After all these years, we're still fighting for racial equality, racial justice. After all of these years, I think he would be really, really hurt. Reverend Arnold, what is so uh, remarkable about this, uh, what happened? Uh the west end of Capitol Hill, if you're up there, you can look all the way past the Washington Monument to the Lincoln Memorial. And of course, as you know, that's where Martin Luther King Jr. gave his famous I Have a Dream speech. The irony of that, how did those words stay with you, Reverend Arnold? Well, we, we have to have hope. And um, uh, my daughter practiced law there. And, um, and thank God she was not in the area uh, on the six, um, but we we believe that hope is not seen. That that we have to continue to pray for the day that men will come together and understand that the inalienable rights are for everybody, and that we all should have the same equity, the same equality, and uh, we just keep praying and pushing for that. Um, I. I, I keep struggling from day to day. I don't want to be NAACP president. I'm that because nobody else wants it. And I keep trying to make a difference in this community and, and in this life. And Councilman, uh, I'm gonna ask you, I mean, you're in this uh, current generation where a lot of this is evolving around you. Uh, the images that you saw on January 6th, and you're, you're right, there has been progress made, but there's work to be done. Uh, how long is it going to take us as a nation, in your opinion, as a young man, to heal from that? What has to happen, in your opinion? Uh, it, it's a it's a work in progress. You know, as you know, we we talk about you know uh, being a more perfect union. Uh, there are some things that just absolutely have to be addressed, and I'm really looking forward. Uh, again, Wednesday with the change of administration to uh, really address things such as wealth, wealth inequality, 
you know, poverty, home ownership, mental health, criminal justice, minimum wage, the, the list goes on and on. Uh, and these things have to be addressed because they're impacting so many people, specifically in my generation. And uh, I'd argue people that look exactly like me, black males are, are being incarcerated at alarming rates. Uh, all the data is showing that uh, not enough attention is, is placed uh, on, on the black male. Um, and so f for me, uh, it's time for action and I'm going to do any and everything that I can, uh, not only to advocate at the local level, but also uh, advocate at the federal level to make sure that progress continues to be made and we're not having these same conversations in the next 20 to 30 years. And Reverend Arnold, I know you lived in fear. We have talked before about what you went through uh, in the 1960s uh, growing up in the Deep South. Are you worried about the inauguration coming up, especially after what we saw almost two weeks ago. And we'll have to make this brief. We're about 30 seconds out. Yes, 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 yes. Um, the fear is real. Um, we're dealing with it right now. The death threats and things are coming. Um, and we pray that, uh, and I thank God that Joe Biden and the administration decided to face this uh, threat uh, face to face and hopefully uh, will, as Alex has said so eloquently, that this next administration will help us and give us some relief. Well, Reverend uh, Gerald Arnold and City Councilman Alex Burden, uh, take care and thank you for taking time to talk with us tonight. We appreciate it.